All right, so now comes the uh, the interesting switch because I have to introduce the next speaker and the next speaker is me. So I think the best way to do this is I'll change my name from host um, and uh, and then I shall bring in my slides. Oops, wrong window. I should have prepared this before. Share screen. Window, there's my slides. Cool. Uh, so our next speaker is me. Um, my name's Sam Machin. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, this. is This is kind of how I got into Node Red, actually. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, my um, my day job now is I work for Flowforge as a product manager. Um, so, really, you know, within the Node Red ecosystem and, and all this kind of thing, and how we can how we can run Node Red. But uh, my my original background is telecoms, and specifically uh, APIs and, and controlling phone calls and text messages and things through that. Um, and that's, yeah, what, what led me to Node Red, I think about four, maybe five years ago now. Um, so as a, as a really useful way to just, you know, control and, and manage APIs. Um, so yeah, programmable communications. What What is programmable comms? Um, for those of you that, so when I say communications, I'm talking basically about, about phone numbers, phone calls, text messages, and this kind of thing. Um, so what we have today, you know, on your mobile, um, and it's interacting with the phone system. So the phone network is a massive, you know, massive distributed network of computers really these days um, and end user devices. There's, you know, something like six and a half billion phone numbers or something in the, in the world. Um, each one of those represents a, represents a user's device and they, they can all communicate via each other. They have an addressing scheme. Um, so the, the phone number scheme, we, you know, the country code, area code and, and number, you can, you can address them. And then you can do voice text messages, at least on mobile phones. Um, but it, this goes way back to, you know, the the same principles of the system have been there for getting on for 140 years. 1883, I think, was the first mechanical phone exchange. And, you know, not a lot has, it hasn't radically changed. There's, there's a hell of a lot of backward compatibility in that. Um, so in, you know, the last... 10, 10 and a bit years though, this concept of programmable communications really came out. Um, and this is interacting with the phone system using web technologies. Um, so APIs, REST, um, you know, webhooks, JSON, XML, all these kind of technologies we use for um, so, you know, talking to an API like the Twitter API or uh, indeed the Node Red API. And, and these days, what makes everything run? A few companies started to emerge which were giving you access to the phone system via these friendly APIs. Um, anybody that before that was doing it, you know, there, there were ways to hook into the phone system, but they were weird proprietary protocols. Um, you had to get, you know, custom connectivity. Um, you, we, you were talking a, a five-figure sum to get started. So um, really, the, the, these companies kind of changed the changed the game in terms of making it accessible. Um, so primarily, the original implementation was um, text messages, SMS, and phone calls. Um, and then as that world has evolved and fewer people make regular phone calls these days um, and, and send messages. Um, it's expanded. So the the over-the-top services like WhatsApp, like Viber, Telegram, the messages, um, there's APIs to those. Fundamentally, they're, they're still kind of like a text message. It's just a slightly different network. Um, and then, you know, real-time video, WebRTC. So, so what we're using here in StreamYard is based on WebRTC. I'm, I'm talking to you through a browser. Um, and there are platforms out there, the, these programmable communication platforms that'll let you build things with video um, and chat. Uh, I say they've been around since about 2008 um, is probably the the, the first um, real kind of genesis of, of that or the, the milestone. Um, and, you know, there, there's lots of companies out there. I'm just going to call out three of the three of the big ones. I'm trying to keep this a, a vendor agnostic talk, but um, probably three of the, the top ones today. There's a company called Vonage who acquired another company called Nexmo, which was a programmable communications platform um, that where I used to work. Uh, so you see Nexmo Vonage used interchangeably sometimes. Uh, Messagebird, another one, uh, based in the Netherlands, and then Twilio, um, which probably most people have, if, if they've done anything in this space, will have at least heard of Twilio. Um, they, I think, really may open the, created the market. So they were sort of 2008, I believe, was the early days of them, and, and this idea of, hey, we've got an API to the phone system. Um, and then there's a long tail of, probably literally hundreds, hundreds more out there today. Um, and, you know, regional ones, localized ones in specific countries. Um, there's some open source stuff, uh, which we'll, I'll talk about a little bit in, uh, later. Um, and, you know, there, there's 
hundreds of different ways to to get an API connection into the phone system today. Um, so why is this interesting, relevant to Node-RED? Um, well, Node-RED is program, uh, visual programming for event-driven applications, as we now call it. Um, we used to say for the Internet of Things, and I used to have to then try and explain how telephony uh, was an Internet of Things type device in uh, in this sense, because a phone is just another thing connected to the Internet. But it's event-driven. Um, and communications is inherently event-driven. Uh, you, you send a text message, that's an event. Um, you, you, die, you, you get a phone call, your phone rings, that's an event. Um, and what these providers do is turn these uh, events into, or these, in, these communications events into webhooks, which means you can then consume them as events in Node-RED and do what you want with them. Um, so how, how does this work? Well, typically um, a te text message, simplest. So when a user sends a text message to one of your programmable numbers. So in this sense, we get new phone numbers um, for our applications. And from my phone, I send a, to a text message to a number which is linked to my application. That makes an HTTP request to the app. Um, and that contains, that HTTP post will, will contain the body of the message. It'll say, this is the text message that who sent it. This is the number they sent it to. This is what the message says. Um, so you've just got a, a little bit of input. Um, and then you can just... You can just act that back and say, you know, 200 OK um, and do something with that message in your in your flow or you can choose to reply to it. So either depending on the platform, you can reply to the HTTP request with a correctly formatted body that will be sent back as a new text message to the person that sent it like a reply or you, you make a new request. Um, so that can be something as simple as I think, you know, food trucks and things will will do a what's our daily specials. So you text a specials or you text something like you know a word to a number and it replies back with the the special taco of the day or or whatever that kind of thing is um, so really simple little services but actually really useful for businesses um, phone calls again they work in a similar way um, incoming call makes a request um, and you decide how to proceed so a little bit more complex phone calls but we'll uh, we'll come on to that because there's not more you can do to it um, this is something so so to explain one of the one of the things that people have uh, sometimes get, get a little bit confused with, so I'm just finding my slides, um, a little bit confused with in terms of programmable communications. Um, so we all understand the idea of sending a text message from my phone to your phone, from a person to person. Um, you know, each phone has a number. But these, the, in, in programmable communications, we talk about person to application or application to person because it's a separate flow. You are interacting from the point of view of the phone call or the point of view of the text message, you're interacting with a service. So I'm sending the message from, from my phone as the user here to the number of the application, or the application is sending the message to me. Now, I suspect everybody has, has had some interaction with this because all of those package delivery notifications, your parcel will be delivered between nine and 12 tomorrow. Your, you know, your driver is on the way. Um, these are application to person type messages. Um, so these are the, the two main models in programmable communications of person to app. You, somebody sends something in, app to person, and it may come out. What we don't have control of is you don't have programmable control of person to person messages. So I can't sort of hook an app in that says when anybody sends a text message to my mobile number, I want to do something with it. Um, however, there is a, a way to create these person to person-to-person uh, -person kind of exchanges where you send it into the application and the application forwards it on. Um, again, a very common use of this is things like the, the ride-sharing driver. So if you're, you're talking to your Uber driver and you call a number that's, um, yeah, you, you, and you talk to your Uber driver, what you're, the number you're calling is an application number. And what that number is doing is looking up in the system who the driver that's currently assigned to pick you up is based on the, the caller ID and connecting you to the right the right driver, but it hides the number of both you as the caller, so the driver doesn't see your number, and you don't see the driver's number. And it's it's part of the ride sharing kind of staying in the in the loop, uh, making sure that you know protects privacy, but also protects their business model because you can't cut the platform out and just sort of phone the driver directly and pay cash. Um, so you know that, it's kind of a concept that's important to uh, to remember in this. 
Um, so this uh, this example flow here, this is a simple simple way of handling an SMS. Um, hopefully you can just about see that, but I've got a screenshot here, my iPhone just sending a, a hello world text message to a number um, and a simple node red flow just using the core nodes where we, we've got an incoming webhook on, on get slash SMS and what's in the payload of that message, we're just logging it out here. But um, we've got the the object which contains this this funny thing here, MSISDN, which is telco speak for the phone number of the person that spent it to you. So that's my mobile number, hence I've, I've blurred the last bit out. Uh, the number it's two, so really that should be considered the from, the first one. Uh, the two, that's the number I sent it to, uh, an ID, um, the text of the message, uh, the type of message it was text, a timestamp, and a few other sort of internal things, the account it was it was sent on and stuff. So handling a text message in Node-RED is, is kind of that easy. Um, all you, you really need to also do um, is you'll need to configure the number. So going to the provider's platform, um, buying, renting a number. So they're typically, it depends on the country, in the UK, I think they're about a dollar a month. Um, you get your phone number, you pick a new number, um, and you set up your webhook URL. Where where should messages be sent? Hit save, away you go. Any messages sent to that number will go to uh, go to your, to your application. Cool. Okay. So moving on, as you said, to phone calls um, and... And the like. For those that maybe aren't, aren't from the UK, that's that's the original kind of what what phones looked like when I was a child, at least back in the in the eighties and things. This was the standard phone that uh, that British Telecom gave every household with the old rotary dial. Uh, but a lot of this would still work with one of those rotary dial phones today. Um, so, as, as I said earlier, phone calls are more complex. Uh, they're more they're, there's more to them. Um, a call has a number of events, so it can go through. Initially, that stage of, you know, you dial the number, the call is ringing, then the call gets answered by the application. Um, or if you're making a call to a person, the phone rings and then the, the person answers. So you get an event when it answers. Uh, and then within that call, you can do um, ha capture input. So, you know, please leave a message after the beep, beep, chunk of recording. And then that recording is sent to your application. Uh, DTMF input, which for those of you that aren't familiar, DTMF is... Uh, dual tone multi-frequency it's the, the the tones the buttons on the phone so if somebody presses five that plays a tone down the line that's an event so you can capture the the input either as a sequence of digits or as one-off digits so press one for sales press two for support um, that kind of thing or you know please enter your account number uh, anything like that and then the call has ended so there's a number of, of events that come through and the way that most of the providers use is they use some kind of markup language scripting type of, of context for making these, uh, controlling the call. So the initial call comes in, um, you know, ringing, and you your application gets a webhook and responds back with a piece of script that says, okay, answer the call, play a bit of text-to-speech, and then wait for the user to press a button. And then when they press that button, send it to this endpoint and then you get another event that says the user pressed three and you decide what to do and that can be connect you know forward the call on to another endpoint so like they've pressed three connect them to sales or it can be play a record another different recording so you can you can interact with it um, and so it's that combination of the markup language and webhooks um, are the fundamental sort of building blocks of, of programming a call uh, and i say they've all got a slightly slightly customized platform specific language. Uh, Twilio calls there's Twimmel, uh, Twilio markup language, and that's an XML based uh, language. Ironically, most people probably you know would veer back from XML, but it's f for the way that calls work, it's actually quite nice because you can nest stuff and things. Um, Vonage uses a, a scheme called NCCO, uh, which is a JSON based, uh, so an array with a list of, of JSON objects in there as, as, as actions. Um, MessageBird has both XML and JSON. I think JSON originally, and they seem to be introducing XML as a as a parallel, so depending on your on your platform. Um, and actually, as I'll show you in a minute, Node-RED handles both of these quite well. Um, and yeah, so here's just some little examples of, of what that looks like. Um, so this is at the top, some twi twi Twilio Twimmel. Um, so we have an XML declaration, and then ooh, let's go back one. Uh, we wrap it in a um, a response and then gather, which is their verb for collecting input, either via speech or via tones. Um, we're looking for a timeout of three seconds. So wait, if they haven't pressed anything within three seconds, move on. 
um, and we're capturing just one digit. So then, yeah, please press one or say sales for sales through the speech wrapped in that. Um, similarly, Vonage uh, has it slightly more uh, longer, more more uh, more lines, but actually the same information. We're doing some speech to text here that says, please enter a digit. And then we're collecting that digit, one digit through DTMF and sending it to this, this endpoint, this event URL. Um, and again, yeah, message bird, uh, kind of similar to the Twilio, um, lots more sort of markups and uh, and options in there. But fundamentally, we have a say that says, welcome to message bird, press one or press two. So you're giving the user some kind of instruction and then you're waiting for some input. Um, and this is, you know, this is reasonably similar. You, it, once you kind of get the, read the documentation, you start to play around, you can see what it's doing. So uh, doing this in Node-RED though, so we know Node-RED, it's visual. We don't want to be writing too much script. Um, so you can, to some extent, depending on the platform, um, this this is the actually the Nexmo platform, uh, Nexmo nodes, or this is what what is now the Vonage API. Um, I actually built these <laughs> in my in my previous job. Um, I don't think they've they've been updated since I left, unfortunately. But uh, they still have the old branding. But it all still the API is the same. So this would be a call flow of what we saw earlier in that uh, in that Vonage NCCO. So the webhook comes in for answer. That's that's where we've directed the phone number when it rings to make a request to slash answer, and we respond back with a talk action and then an input action to capture the data. And and inside. Uh, these are just screenshots, but inside the config for this node, you can set up what you say in the talk. You can choose the voice you want to use, all that kind of thing. Um, and again, in the input, you set up how many digits you're expecting. Are you just collecting one digit or is it a 10 digit number? Um, you know, when should you time out? All that kind of thing. Um, and then the input comes in. Um, so this is our, our next webhook, which this input is told it where to go to. Um, and we will inspect that payload to say what. What digit did they press? If they pressed one, we'll play a message and then we'll use this connect action to forward the call on to somewhere. Um, if they press two, we'll play a slightly different message and forward the call on to somewhere else. Um, and because these are these are webhooks, we have this closing return, return action here. So it's much like an HTTP request response node. Um, doing it in, in Twilio. Um, so the Twilio node, I think Pablo mentioned is actually one of the most, one of the most popular ones. And I think it's pre-installed on, on an environment, which is probably why, but, um, that one, that, that node mostly handles SMS. If you want to do the voice, um, you both good and bad, there aren't any custom nodes at the moment for doing Twimmel, but you can just write XML straight away in the, uh, in the, in the template nodes. Um, so this is just some Twimmel with templating where I'm just reading back the name, uh, the, sorry, the number that you're calling from. Uh, okay. So I mentioned webhooks um, a minute ago. Uh, so this is uh, sorry, the um, one of the one of the challenges. If you're running Node Red locally um, and you're running Node Red on on your laptop on a Raspberry Pi at home, you know that kind of thing getting started, as quite a lot of people are, um, you need to it needs to be able to be accessible as a server from these from these webhooks, from these services. Um, now, you know, if you're kind of technically minded and things, maybe you've, you, you know how to do port forwarding on your router. Um, so you can turn on the, from your external IP address, you can say, oh, forward all the traffic to this port, to port 1880 on the IP address of my Raspberry Pi or whatever. Um, but that also, you know, then you've got things like DNS. Do I want a host name, security? It, it's all a little bit... Um, a little bit clunky. So a quick call shout out for um, a, another package out there or a service called Ngrok, um, which kind of solves a lot of that. It lets you run an agent on your local machine, which tunnels out through your network at home to the point on the internet and gives you a consistent host name and forwards the traffic straight away to a port, in this case, to Node-RED. Um, so Ngrok is that there is a free tier where you're, you don't get a persistent address or, uh, or it changes. But uh, yeah, Ngrok will will really was originally created for web for handling webhooks, um, especially in in development environments. Um, and there is an Ngrok package out there as well that you can drop on. Um, it's a it's a node I created as a simple wrapper around the Ngrok service, so you can just drop that into your Node Red. Click it's like an inject node. Click the start button, and it'll tell you the URL um, that that you've got, so you can send traffic straight away to there. Um, okay, and very fin finally, finally, uh, because I think we're getting a little time. The uh, 
open source. So Node-RED is an open source project. We love open source. Um, you know, it gives us like a job. A lot of people use Node-RED because it's open source and because they can run it wherever they like. Um, and you might be sort of concerned around using the proprietary commercial third-party services for the phone calls, which you can't then sort of control uh, control what comes from. There is a fantastic project uh, out there called Jambones, jambons.org, um, which is a open source, um, it's an open source programmable communications platform. So it's a run your own Twilio, message bird, Vonage, whatever. Um, it's, it's not a beginner project. Um, it does kind of rely on you having a bit of experience with things like SIP and voice over IP. Um, so if you've done stuff like setting up asterisk before, maybe the, the little home PBX, um, that will, that will help on there. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, you. You then bring your own VoIP service, so you can just get phone numbers from from anywhere, um, from sort of tele commercial providers, or even run it in a in a private network. But uh, cool. So there we are. Um, I can see Nick's now joined. So I'm hoping Nick might be. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Have you come to do the questions? <laughs> so I, I thought to... it would only be fair for me, for to give you a hand rather than you have to. Um... Although, do the double, <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me just have a scan through. Uh, yes, I was just questions. Uh, I, I, the one that has jumped out was, um, do I hear a dog? <laughs> yes, surprisingly, he's been really good all day, and then he's just woken up and and is scratching at the door to the office because he's been <laughs> shut out. So. Awesome. Um, um, so yeah, there've been. A few fairly general questions come through. Um, let me just just proofreading them before I show them. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, this this one's coming, which I, I guess is a little tangential. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, as as we're both here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what's the node roadmap for large scale requests? The event driven app will be able to deal with massive requests, for example, a thousand devices requesting at the same time. Well, so I mean, it depends on the request. I mean, I, I guess when you even look at the sort of the telecom stuff, you've got to think about what's the actual size of the request you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Are you dealing with a large scale of tiny messages, a large scale of big messages, um, and and what are you doing with those messages? The amount of the amount of processing you do on it is is often the the deciding factor. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I think the, the node red answer has always been, yeah, the, uh, you you kind of you need to scale your your environment to handle the sorts of workloads you care about, as you would any application, any Node.js application, um, you know, be able to do, put multiple node instances behind a load balancer if you're dealing with HTTP. Um, yeah, again, it, it depends on so many variables, but I don't think there's anything inherent in Node-RED that's different to a normal application architecture for how you would choose to scale it. Um, and again, there's always going to be a limit as to what an individual Node-RED instance can do to, to help address that. But, um, you know, it, it's the type of thing we, we are looking at in a bigger picture, um, more, you know, thinking about how do you take Node-RED from, you know, the, a single instance app to something you want to scale much more broadly, um, and whether, whether there's more that can be done in the core of Node-RED to help that. I was at NodeConf EU, uh, Node.js conference this week, and there were some really interesting talks around um, performance and uh, optimizations and that type of stuff, and it, it's sparked some ideas in my head of some some areas of performance we can improve. Um, yeah, and I absolutely. thought, I mean, I've yeah. some of the stuff I've been playing with has been with um with doing voice through Node Red, so I've been some some walkie talkies and and even some stuff with Alexa. If I say it very carefully, it won't trigger. Um, but actually, you know, and and you've got audio streams coming through, so twenty millisecond uh, frames of audio into node red and just just really rooting them not doing a massive amount of processing but if you've got 50 messages a second um from a, from an endpoint it still amazes me that it's uh, it's quite comfortable with that as long as i'm just sort of sending them from one point to another um, yes awesome cool well i'm gonna
drop out as I can oh, see our next yes. speaker is in the waiting room. Oh. I should go. Yeah, you go and sort them. We've got a we've got another quick break, so uh, I think we're back at. Uh,